indeed, his praise will be ever on my lips. This is an honor and a privilege for me to be before you. And um, as an icebreaker for myself, I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that happened to me in college way back in 1979. I had a speech class. Um, I attended the class a couple of days. I made it through the one minute speech. I made it through the two minute speech. But when the assignment was the three minute speech, I withdrew from the class. <laughs> a few years past that, I, um, as a teenager and young adult, I sang in our church choir and I was given uh, a lead. They had a backup. So that Sunday morning, we did well, and she started playing the music for that song, and I looked at her and I said, and the backup had to sing. So by any chance, do I have any backups? Just, <laughs> just kidding. I'm Janet Harrington, the wife of Elder Bishop Harrington. Um, we've been members of Abundant Life for 12 years now, and we are part of the uh, plant team that came down to start this church. And I am elated and overjoyed. Hopefully, unless the Lord says otherwise, I won't be before you long. But I do believe the Lord has a message for someone this evening. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you as humbly as I know how. I ask for forgiveness for anything in my being that is not like you. For I want you to hear my prayer and act accordingly to your will. I pray that you use me to your glory to speak what thus saith the Lord and to only speak what you will have me to say. Open the ears of your people. Open their eyes to see. Open their hearts and minds to receive your word and your love. Anoint me to do thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you have your Bible, stand with me and turn to John 15, 9 through 17. That's John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask in the Father's name Ask, ask the Father in my name, he may give you these things I command you. And the other verse is John 3, 16, one that we all pretty much know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You may be seated. If I were to give this a title, it would be, I love you. Yes, I love you, whether I know you or not, because that's something that I just simply do. 
I love humankind and people. Yes, I love you, but I'm hearing God say, tell my people that I love you, meaning God loves you. He loves us. That's where I'm going to start. He loves us. Now, just let that soak in. He, meaning God, loves us. He loves me. He loves you. And if you're not walking with him yet, note I say yet, he loves you too. Let me tell you, as expected, after being asked if I would speak this evening, I prayed and prayed. I fasted some or fasted a little. I say a little because I love to eat. Um, I'm just being real. I like food. And this is something Jesus and I are working out more me than Jesus. He's already got this under control. I'm the one with the problem. <laughs> I listen to worship music. Um, I've got playlists that have lots and lots of songs because when I play the music, I can get in tune with the Lord, and then that allows me to hear him. So I'm doing all this, and I'm asking, Lord, Father God, what shall I say? What do you want me to talk about? So I thought I was um, going to speak on the will of God. Tell them that they, um, too, can walk in my will and even know when they're in my will. I had looked up scriptures. I studied different versions of the Bible. I was looking up definitions in Greek, hoping that I could explain exactly what it meant and do it right. Meaning, different meanings for different things. I was almost ready. Bishop had asked me, I think it was Sunday, was I ready? And I said, I am. I just got to put everything in order so that it'll flow. Then Monday morning happened. My normal routine is to get the kids up. Um, we are foster parents. And um, this week we have three additional boys with us um, so that their foster family could go on vacation. I get them up. We, um, I drop them off at camp, daycare. I run a few errands and if, I need, if I need to. And I ran into a lady that I talk to on a regular basis. And she normally tells me about her horrible life and how awful everything is. And I tell her about how my life is not that bad because I have Jesus. He's with me through the rough times as well as the good. So on Monday... All I could do after she got finished talking was take a deep breath and look at her and say, you need Jesus. <laughs> and um, as usual, she deflected the conversation to something else. She needs the Lord really bad, but um, she's got some major strongholds in her life and things that are, that are keeping her bound and tied up. Technically, she's not ready to be free yet. As I was leaving and in the car to head to my next stop, I heard that small, still, audible voice that Pastor Harold just spoke about say, I love her. So, scripture started coming to mind about love, and I was um, like, no, not me. Lord, are you really going to do this to me? And as I was talking to the Lord about this sudden urge to think about love, I'm saying, Lord, I know you have a sense of humor, but you are really going to do this to me. So I went um, to shop as quickly as possible um, because he began to speak, and I had to get home so I could write down the notes. So I consider myself Jesus' friend. What is a friend? So I got the dictionary, and the dictionary defines friend as a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, or one attached to another by affection or esteem, or a favorite companion. A friend is special. You go out of your way for your friends. Jesus died on the cross for his. Me being his friend, I had a decision to make. Was I going to speak on God's will, or was I going to continue my walk in his will by speaking about something I had to now begin from the start and have ready by this moment?
Therefore, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That became an encouraging word for me to be able to do this. Moving on, as I walked up my steps to go into the house, groceries and keys in hand, the Lord reminded me of the last few tongues and interpretations that I heard when I was here, and that was given. He's been encouraging us to come. Come to me, says the Lord. Bring me your burdens. Lay them on the altar. Let all of the problems go. You can't carry them. Give them to me. I love you. And these words are coming from different individuals that are willing to be used by God, which shows he's trying to get our attention. In Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus is saying, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You may be wondering, rest? How? I just lost my job. I can't feed my family. This bill is due. My lights are off. I just received a bad report from the doctor, et cetera, et cetera. Things can just go on. We are faced with many unfavorable circumstances and situations in this thing called life. But we can be at rest, even in the midst of all of them, with Jesus. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. I feel the Lord is saying this evening to exchange your problems, pains, worries, illnesses, unhappiness, bills, jobs, lack of job, enough money, food, etc., for what he so desperately wants to give you his love which is which has a whole lot of perks that go along with them my study notes here that go along with Matthew 11 28 through 30 say one of the most gracious commands in the Bible, Jesus' invitation to come, come now, speaks to all who are oppressed by routine, monotony, overwork, responsibility, and tension. Those who are heavy laden endure something that is laid on them from an outside source, causing what we, could, what we would call today burnout. Jesus' form of rest is not absence of work, but rejuvenation and refreshment. In Jesus' day, taking the yoke of another meant coming under the person's leadership and walking in that person's footsteps. When believers take Jesus' yoke, they place themselves under his dominion. Only then do his, belief, do his followers enjoy the day-by-day -day release from stress that God intended. So God did not and does not intend for us to be miserable in living our day-to-day -day lives. Now that we understand that God loves us, let's go over what we need to do to receive this overwhelming love of the Father. I know for some, our God is a difficult concept to believe, for we can't see him. I'm here to tell you, when you look at the grass, the beautiful flowers, trees sometimes bare, and then they're full with vibrant green leaves. The clear blue sky and fluffy cotton ball clouds. Thunder, lightning, rain, and wind. Especially the wind. You feel it, you hear it, but you can't see it. Just like God. And John 3, 8 says, The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Then I thought about rainbows. God left us a special sign with the rainbow. Genesis 9.13 says, I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. So we have God's presence all around us. We just have to realize when we look and see that there is a God. Again, for me, 
When I look at these things, I acknowledge the creator God. Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and that includes everything. We can't see him, so we need faith. Hebrews 1-1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, you have to believe that God is. When at your wit's end, when all is going wrong, when all is going right, all the time, God is. Like Nike says, just do it. With God, just believe it. He is there. So, being that he's there, I'm never alone. When I'm upset, I have someone to talk to. When I'm in want, I say want because all of my needs are met. And he even provides some of my wants. Matthew 6, 31 through 32. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Next on the list is trust. We all have people, things, circumstances, and situations that let us down. I've um, come to tell you that our God who loves us so much will never let you down. Never. The definition of trust is firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. That someone is God Almighty. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And Psalms 13, 5. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. With that one, that's why y'all hear me scream and dance or whatever I'm doing when I'm sitting over there. Because my Lord is good. And I have to, you know, I often tell people there will be no rocks, mountains, trees, you will not have to cry out to God for me because he has done abundantly for me, and I will praise him. Next, let's say I trust him, plain and simple. I trust him with my family. Oh, did, my, did I miss something there? No, nope. okay. With my family, with my money, with my car, my home, my farm, well, more so my husband's farm than mine, with my dog, my health, my entire being, I will trust him, period. The last part of this is obedience. In John 15, the words commandments and command are used several times. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments. Verse 12, this is my commandment. Verse 14, you are my friend if you do whatever I command. Verse 17, these things I command you that you love one another now the study notes here say believers enjoy a reciprocal relationship with God his words abide in them and their branches abide in him a natural outgrowth of that abiding relationship is prayer the most visible expressions of that relationship are joy and love. Jesus wants the Christian's joy to be full. Jesus said that his followers are his beloved friends, and by laying down his life on their behalf, he has already shown ultimate love. It falls to them to love one another the same way, by giving of themselves sacrificially. By laying down his life, Jesus definitively claimed his beloved as friends. Now they must become friends in the fullest sense through obedience. Jesus said that he chose and appointed his disciples 
This appointment was their marching orders and is every Christian's as well. Jesus wants believers to bear fruit, that is, live out the gospel, share the gospel, and win many to him. But he wants that fruit to remain or endure. This is a strong call for making lifelong disciples for Christ, not superficial believers. We must remember that this is a give and take relationship where we must do our part. He loves us. We love him. He tells us what to do for our good, and we follow him. That's it. That's why and how I received this honor and privilege to stand before you and declare the word of God this evening. What I'm telling you is exactly what I do. In my own personal God's will journey, as I have prayed over and over again, Lord, I want your will for my life. Open doors that should be open. Close doors that I should not enter. Help me to not desire what I should not have. Give me what I should. I have the faith that God is going to do for me whatever he wills for me, and it is for his glory and for my good. I trust him. He is my all in all, and he can be yours too if you allow him. I'm not saying this is an easy process. But if I can do it, Lord knows you can. I wouldn't live any other way. Trust in, lean on the one you have faith in. Have faith in the one whom you cannot see. Listen to the wind. You'll know he's there. Why? The one whom you cannot see is your heavenly father, and he wants to be your friend. He wants to walk with you through this life. He never wants to leave you alone, and he won't. I thought this um, last verse was fitting and encouraging. Hebrews 12, 2, and this is from the Message Bible. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. So you have four things to remember. First, believe in him. Second, have faith in him. Third, Trust him. And fourth, be obedient and do what he says. Um, now I'll give you, we've got, you know, being saved as long as I have, 30 years or more. I've got lots of testimonies, but I'm going to just give you two um, this evening. Um, back in 2005, I lost my job, and I had a pretty good paying job. I was a director of radiology at a very small hospital. I was fired unjustly. Because of that, we lost just about everything except what matters. And the what matters is God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, family, and, you know, each other and the love. Um, our home was gone. And what's so important about that is we purchased that land while Bishop was still in the military. And after he retired, he began to you know, clear the land because it had to cut over trees and stuff. And I remember back then him being much younger than now. I mean, he still does real well. But I would watch him cut down trees and physically pick up the pieces, like five feet, six feet long, and take it from one place and walk to another. And he did this day in and day out until we were ready to build a house. We got the house built and then lost my job. Um... And at the time, also, he was an owner-operator as far as driving trucks. I'll try to tell you without, I wrote it down so it could sound all flowy like a story, but anyhow. Um, <laughs> um, after I lost my job, of course, it was real difficult um, on one income, and we ended up losing that house and the land. Um, and because his truck started to have trouble, 
we ended up, um, and it broke down eventually, there was not enough money to repair the truck, so he lost that business. He even um, got a job, of course, because we had to have a steady income with four children. Well, let me tell you, we went from 2005, we moved from, you know, every now and then, all within the one county there, um, but we were as faithful as we possibly could be to the Lord, paying tithes whenever we could. And when, it, when the money was flowing, we did pay tithes. Um, and we served the Lord in as much as we possibly could. Well, in 2013, right before the church plant here, some of you know this story, and I won't tell the whole thing, God allowed us to have what I call my dream home here in, um, for, in Forsyth. And between then and now, we have been blessed to um, have two other properties. So we lost the 12 acres and that house back in 2005, 2006, and now. So, you know, I remember Pastor Jennifer, when she gave her Bible verse not too long ago, she said, God is a restorer. And he is, because we lost the 12, now we have 50 acres of land. And so, and the way that I know that I was supposed to do this on today, is I'm going to give you my testimony from this morning. I began to um, naturally question what I was going to say this evening. And so this is for you, if y'all question it, because I believe in divine appointments. So, as I mentioned earlier, I have a morning routine, and I took the kids to camp and to daycare. On the way home, I was sitting at the stoplight, and I realized I could go to the vet's office to get some flea medication for my dog. So I turned left and went on down there. Looked like nobody was there, but I got out and went up to the sea. Um, and the lady was in there, and she and I began to talk. And so I purchased the medicine, and we started to talk um, about the Lord. And as the conversation kept going, she reached on her desk, and she held up something and showed it to me. And I didn't catch on at first. So she picked up the one piece of paper, and then she picked up. It was one of those little calendars that has Bible verses on it. And she said, my sister gave this to me. And um, so the one that, that was single... She said, I throw these away every single day. But she kept holding it up and gave it to me. And then I actually read it. Um, I'm going to put this in a frame. So, of course, y'all can't see it out here. But I'm going to read the Bible verse to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. John 15, 16. When I looked at her, I was like, you won't believe this. She said, what? I said, I'm speaking tonight. Something that I don't do, and um, I said, I did it once uh, when, for the women's group, but anyway, and she started to cry. I mean, tears came to her eyes. I was so, um, um, whatever, flabbergasted or <laughs> excited or, you know, I was like, I, I didn't cry, but as I was walking to the truck, I was like, whoa. So, I was supposed to be here, and I have told you what God has given me to say. So, at this time, um, I guess... I've never done this before, so with the help of the Lord, we're going to get this done too. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to just say thank you. I just love you so much. And I love you for your word. I love you for being in my life. I love you for your people. I thank you for each and every individual that's here. Dear God, I pray that they open their ears, their hearts, their minds. Father, I pray that you have drawn them. Dear God, you have your way here. Show me what to do. Tell me what you do, what to do. It is for your glory that I exist, for your glory, not mine. 
if there's anybody here now that um, does not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, I pray that you would raise your hands. No one's looking. Don't be bashful. Remember what I said. Jesus went to the cross. He endured the cross. He took the shame. He went through a lot for us. So if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, just raise your hand. Good. Well then, if you have burdens, problems, situations that are just heavy on you, things that you want to just get off of you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If there's things in your life right now that you need to give to the Lord, I want you to think about it, and then we'll have an altar call. But first, before we do that, you can put your hand down. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner. I am sorry for my sin. I ask you for your mercy and forgiveness through the blood of your son, Jesus. I believe he died for me and rose again. I now accept him as my Savior. Amen. So if you thought of something that you'd like to give the Lord tonight, why don't you come to the altar? And this time, if you've been up here before, for the same thing, leave it. I'm not just saying these words. You must know that my husband and I have had trials. It looks like everything is going smooth, pretty, like we've got all this money and yada, yada. No, 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 no. We have our issues also. But what helps us to look like everything is smooth when it's not is Jesus. Because I have the joy. I have the joy. You know, I know you hear people say this, but when you are walking like I am, it happens. The bill comes, you look at it, and you go, how am I going to do this? Fold it back up, but continue your walk with the Lord. And then somehow, amazingly, the money does show up. But you have to do your part. Well, I will pray with her. And then if anyone else would like to come up, um, you can come on. Um, and then as far as prayer warriors, you know, if anyone else comes up.
What the Lord spoke to you this evening will be of some help to you, but you have to know that you have to do your part. Um, let's stand for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.